Good afternoon, Oxfordshire Battalion, RSM here. In the light of the remembrance period starting, I thought I'd share a video, just going through a couple of bits about the remembrance period, what it means to us, and in light of that some of you haven't done any remembrance day parades or anything beforehand, as well as some of you, for many of you, never had a chance to do anything last year, I thought I'd go through a few things just to highlight them. First of all, what is remembrance? So the remembrance period is from the launch of the Poppy Appeal through Armistice Day and the Festival of Remembrance and finishes on Remembrance Sunday, the closest Sunday to the 11th of November. It gives us as a nation time to stop, think, mourn and pay thanks to all those that have risked their lives and those that haven't come back from wars and conflicts of our country. It's the biggest day of the year for the whole forces community veterans, serving personnel, their families, and the cadet forces. Who were the British, Royal British Legion? So the Yarbia was found, founded on the 15th of May, 1921, by among others, Field Marshal Douglas Haig, commander of the British forces during the battles of both the Somme and Passchendaele, to support the servicemen coming back from the war. It gained its Royal Charter in 1925, and it is responsible for seven, selling the first poppies in 1921 to raise money for the Hague Fund, which in turn gave the returning war veterans food, clothing and support. It now has over 180,000 members worldwide and is charged with organising the nation's remembrance celebrations each year, as well as a continuing support to veterans, forces members and their families. But why a poppy? During the First World War, the ground was smashed to pieces because of all the artillery bombardments. It was noted by a Canadian Army doctor, Lieutenant Colonel John McClay, McCray, the only thing that grew in the, those conditions were the red poppies. He went on to write one of the most famous poems about it in Flanders Fields. An American humanitarian, Minor Michael, campaigned to make the poppy a symbol of remembrance for those who died in the war. And in 1921, the first artificial poppies approved by Field Marshal Haig were sold in Britain. This design is, known as, is now known as the Haig poppy. Okay, so the 2021 poppy appeal. This year is the centenary of the RBL and the anniversary of the first poppies to be sold. Each year, an army of 40,000 volunteers, as well as us, the cadet forces, gives up their time to sell poppies in towns, centers across the country. Not all by um, paper poppies like this. You can get also enamel badges. And for people that are affiliated to certain regiments, you can get regimental crests on top of the poppies and cap badges. Not all the poppies are even the same shape or colour. The Scottish poppies look like this with the four leaves. While we while some people prefer to wear purple poppies to remember all the animals that died during the war, as well as some people um, preferring to wear a white poppy to remember all the casualties of war and to commit to a peaceful future. It doesn't matter what you wear or how you wear it, just as long as you remember the sacrifice generations of men, women and their families have made so we can live in a safe and free country. What is armistice? An armistice is a formal agreement of warring parties to stop fighting. In this case, it was the agreement to end the World War I. It ended at 11 o'clock on the 11th November 1918, and the anniversary each year is marked with the nation stopping what they're doing for a two minute silence to reflect at how lucky we are to have lived in a security, in security and freedom. And remember those who have sacrificed, been injured, or given their lives to make that happen. In Christchurch Cathedral, there is a turning of the pages ceremony held where the roll of honor book is and its pages turned and the names of those that have died in our local regiments read out. Similar events happen across war memorials and parishes across the country where the names of their war dead are recorded. As members of, Ox of the Army Cadet Force, we should be stood to attention throughout the silence and if officers or sergeant majors are in uniform, you will see them saluting. What is the Festival of Remembrance then? Every year on the evening before Remembrance Sunday, royalty, senior government and religious leaders 
join thousands of veterans, serving personnel and their families at the Royal Albert Hall in London for an evening of reflection, stories and unity. The first one took place in 1923 at the end of the evening as, the two minute, as they observe a two minute silence, one million poppy petals fall from the ceiling, representing all those that have lost, we've lost as a country to war. So the Remembrance Day Parade then. On the first anniversary of the end of World War I, King George V led the country's mourning as he unveiled a statue in Whitehall, London, called the Cenotaph. The word translates from the Greek meaning empty tomb and represents all those servicemen whose bodies were never recovered into a grave. It gives not only their loved ones somewhere to grieve, but has since been the focus point for the country's remembrance and respects. Every year since, wreaths are laid by the royal family, the government, the heads of the armed forces, and a service is held together with the mass bands of all three services playing. Buglers from the Royal Marines sound the last post and finish at exactly 11 o'clock and a two minute silence is held. This will be on TV whilst you're doing your own parades across the county. So it's well worth recording it and playing back later or going on iPlay. So that was the first unveiling of the cenotaph, what it looks like today. Traditionally, the Queen has, has always laid the first wreath on behalf of the Grateful Nation, but since she's stepped back slightly from um, some of the more rigorous duties, her son Prince Charles has now taken that role on for a couple of years. At the end of the service, veterans line up to march past the cenotaph, giving an eyes left with each leader saluting and wreaths are laid on their behalf by Royal British Legion volunteers. Right, RSM's tips for your braid. Wear decent socks and woolly gloves. You'll be stood around for quite a while, so you need to keep your feet and your hands warm. Have a proper breakfast. This is important to give your body the fuel it needs to not only stand around for a long time whilst on braid, but also to keep you going when you're marching past. Make sure you spend the time the day before making sure all of your uniform and boots are properly ironed and polished. Have some small change in your pocket. Many detachments attend a church parade on the same day and the collection trays usually pass around. Wiggle your toes whilst on parade. It keeps the circulation going, preventing you from feeling faint. If the parade marshal misses the words of command, make sure you bring yourselves to attention for the last post the two minute silence and the national anthem. If you're feeling like you're going to faint, go to the back of the parade and see your instructors. We're not the regular army and you will not get into trouble for walking off. Be proud. It's an honor to wear our uniform in public and to support our army family. The day means a lot to veterans and service personnel as they remember loved ones and friends. And most of all, enjoy it. It's your parade, it's your day, it happens once a year, it's going to be a great, great day with your family and friends watching over you as you prayed with the rest of your cadets in, in your detachment locations. Let's reconfigure. Thank you, Oxfordshire Battalion. Have a great parade and I shall see you soon.